Hi y'all, welcome back to the channel. Whee, it's hot, 102 degrees, but I needed to do a video for y'all. I've been promising it for a while. Welcome to Texas. To get this hot in Australia, Andy. Ah, welcome to Texas. So in the summer, in July, I've been promising you a video about surge protection devices, and today's the day. So what I, I want to talk to you about installing surge protection devices and why you need them. The problem that we get into when we have a thunderstorm, and we have a lot of them around here, uh, is that lightning might hit a tree out there. And when it does, it'll send a large transient spike through the ground through the air and it will get picked up by antennas. Now, what are the antennas? Well, they're the wires that run underground and overhead into your house. Those wires that come from the grid and that run underground to your house or over, overhead to your house are like big antennas for these transient voltage spikes. And so I think that say, they say that 99% of all damage from lightning is not from uh, in, in your house, it's not from lightning that hits a house, it's from lightning that comes in on the power lines and fries your electronics, the computer board in your refrigerator or the, your computer or uh, any kind of control device for your microwave oven, your oven, your, your washing machine, your dishwasher. They all have computer circuitry that's delicate that can get zapped by these high voltage spikes that can come in on the line. So every house should have whole house surge protection, but most of the whole house surge protection you get, those breakers that you might buy at the, at the big box store that cost $40, they don't have the capability of really protecting your house. I can't tell you that they're not going to protect your house, but the test results on those things is that they don't clamp down with near the authority that they need to to protect delicate electronics. So you're, it's hit or miss. You might play it, get lucky, but you're rolling the dice. Now, if it fries the electronics in your refrigerator, you might have a $500 repair bill. But if it fries the electronics in our systems that we build, Oh, that could be much worse. That could be you without power for quite some time while we wait for replacement parts. So what I want to do today is talk to you about the surge protection devices that I've chosen. These are made by Midnight Solar. And based on the test results that I have read, I think these are about as good as it gets unless you start spending big money. These are in the $90, $100 a piece range, something like that. It's gonna depend on how many you buy and how, how good of a deal you can find from a distributor, but it takes quite a few of these to do it right. And, and Midnight Solar has some good YouTube videos out about these devices and how to install them. They're, they've been around for many years, these videos. So, uh, you know, you might find them, they're 10 years old, but they're still accurate. These three that you see here are for three arrays, solar arrays that are on top of this solar shed, three series of panels that come in. And because those series are gonna be in excess of 300 volts, we're using the 600 volt midnight solar surge protection device. They make a 115 volt, a 300 volt, and a 600 volt. And here we used three of the 600 volts, one on each of the arrays. We tried to keep our wires as short and our bends as big as possible to uh, in between the device itself and the wiring that it's, that it's connected to. This one, I think I might actually redo this one. I think I can probably get this wire to be a little shorter and a little bigger bend. 
and this one was trying to get around a bunch of wires, but these are very close to the to the wire that they're that they're collecting off of. And then it's important that you get the ground wire on these to get into your ground system as quickly as possible. So these all connect here and run in to the um, main grounding system that's gonna run over to the house. And of course we only wanna have one ground on any system like this. And that's gonna be over at the house. So we're running a big ground wire, a six gauge ground wire over to the house to tie all the grounds from all this equipment into. Now, this panel is a, a collector panel. It comes from the grid and it's a distribution panel actually. It comes from the grid, this power comes in from the grid and then it's distributed to each of these breakers, ties in to one of these uh, lugs on these inverters. We have three inverters here, hybrid inverters, and each one of those breakers ties into that. So what's happening now, we have, this is a, this is a 300 volt. This is a 240 volt system we're working with. So this is a 300 volt surge protection device. We have one that I'm not showing you because it would be a little bit of a walk out there, but uh, we have one out at the main panel where it comes in from the grid. And that main, that main panel is protected with a 300 volt surge protection device so that it captures the power, uh, the, the surge, before it gets into any of this system but we have about 200 feet of underground service between here, between that protection device and this system. And that's plenty to act as an antenna and picked up a surge from a lightning strike on that tree right there. So we want to protect every panel because we want to protect these inverters. It's imperative that we try to protect these inverters from transient surges from lightning strikes or any other high voltage transient spike that might occur. Read up on the Carrington events um, because you can get these surges from solar flares and, and the, we can be bombarded from the sun as well. And there are other military uh, things that can create these same surges. Now, can we protect against everything? No, I'm not fooling myself, but I'm doing what I can without spending buku money. Boku? Buku? So each of my distribution panels or collector panels has its own surge protection device. These are all 300 volt devices. This is the one that protects me from power that goes between the grid and this building from the main panel uh, where it comes in and I have a protection device. This protects the wire uh, that would come, bring in a surge after that into this room. This one, this panel brings in power from the solar array that's on another building it uses uh, solar edge uh, inverters. And so these are going to be AC coupled. This is an AC coupled system. And the AC couple, coupled system can bring in power here and then distribute through each of these breakers to these inverters. And this is the gen lug, the generator lug. And that generator lug is what you use if you're trying to feed AC coupled power into these inverters. So this is a completely different system that I'm protecting from. This isn't the grid. This is anything that's picked up on the solar array that then uh, is, runs underground over to here. Uh, this picks that up and protects it before it gets into these inverters. 
This one is the load panel. These breakers supply power to these two little buildings here, but also it, it collects power from these inverters and sends it through this wire back to provide power to the house. And that wire between here and the house can pick up that spike and run it through this panel and into these inverters. And we don't want to fry our inverters. They are our lifeline. Now the last one, and this one, I'm not certain that we need it, but this is a battery combiner box. I have a video about how I put this together and how it's used. It's a midnight solar product also. These breakers are um, sold by Midnight Solar. They're made by Carlisle Switches, uh, Carling's Switches, but they are marketed and, and put together here by Midnight Solar. It's a great, this is a great box. And in this box, I'm gonna collect the battery, the power from the batteries. And there are eight batteries that I've built, 18, eight 14 kilowatt hour batteries that are gonna sit on the floor right underneath here. And this, this wall is off that back wall by two feet so that the batteries don't come out in front of these panels. And so you can walk up and work on this. Now I know this panel comes out farther than that panel. And I know, could be better, but it's how it is because we're, we've got cooling systems that want to run across here. And I know, I've heard the comments. In any case, this battery combiner box uh, is servicing the batteries that have BMSs. And each of those BMSs is a computer board. And those computer boards can get fried. Now the, the batteries are only 52 volts. These 300 volt surge protectors, surge protection devices, they will pass the testing, I think, I could be wrong. This is my memory and I'm old, but I believe that they test at, at, pass, at stopping anything above about 480 volts. And I think the 600 volts stop anything above 770 volts. And these are 115 volt surge protection devices because anything that can get past one of these into this battery combiner box, I want to protect it at the lowest voltage that I can. And so this 115 volt surge protection devices by Midnight Solar are designed to protect these low voltage, uh, lower voltage battery systems and, and the like. So that's why they make a 115 volt surge protection device. You can search for these online. I'm not, I don't have any kind of affiliate link. If you wanna use these devices, and I highly recommend that you do, there are several distributors. I believe I got these from Alti, and, uh, but Unbound Solar I, is where I got this box. There are several good distributors that distribute Midnight Solar products, and the prices, I believe, are reasonable for what you get. This was an expensive device, but for what you get, if you were trying to do this yourself, I've seen all these systems where you've got all these components fastened to the walls and all the wires are all exposed. And maybe on a smaller system, that's worth works. I am really glad that I anted up for this. It was painful to do. And it was painful to pay for all of these surge protection devices. I've got seven in this room and another one out there. I've got eight surge protection devices protecting this. But if these lights that glow blue when they're under in, in operation, if you come out here and those lights are down after a thunderstorm, you're gonna be really glad that you had this thing because that means that it swallowed up that transient spike and kept it out of your equipment. And a transient spike that takes out your inverters and shuts your power down, spend the money, y'all.
heck yeah. These are expensive systems and you're not gonna get a replacement control board for these quickly. Now, one last thing I wanna do before I end this video. Well, besides asking you to like and subscribe and share and all those other good things, I wanna show you back behind here how we wired this. Now, in another video that I did on my house, I showed you the hard piping that I did in here we decided to do flexible conduit. And you can see all these ground wires that come in and tie into this ground lug. And then from there, we have a six gauge ground wire that we're running back to the main grounding panel of the main grounding lug where the main distribution panel is because we only wanna tie into a ground in one location and run everything back to that one location. So that'll be tied in very soon. All right. So that's it, y'all. We're getting very close to firing this system up. And it won't be long. Thank you so much. And I hope you'll subscribe and like the channel. And we need to get our... Uh, we need to get our numbers up so we can get this information out to more people. I've got another video that I'm going to make pretty soon. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.